Hi, I am Alana and I am here with my co-host Jamie Hampton. We are so excited to welcome you to our very first episode of the Praying Christian Women podcast. This is a show we have been thinking about for a long time and we are just so thrilled and grateful to be live with you now and we are going to open our show with a word of prayer. God, we just thank you so much for bringing us to this place and for this podcast and just for everyone listening. God, we just lift this up to you and pray that we would all be hearing from you and just learning about prayer and deepening our relationships um, as we walk together along this prayer journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, our verse of the day comes from Proverbs 31, verse 17, and it's, as many of you might know, this is kind of like the, the Proverbs 31 woman. Um, she sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. And as Alana and I were talking about this, um, she brought up that whenever she, well, you tell them, Alana, what, what do you think about when you hear this? Yeah, I I like this first because when I think about it, when she's when it says her arms are strong for her tasks, I just picture like a mother's hands folded in prayer. And I've had this image in my head since my firstborn, who's now twelve, was a baby. And I think God has used it to just remind me that prayer is the real work of a Christian woman. You know, of any Christian. I love but that, especially you know the prayers. Yeah. The prayers of a mother, the prayers of a wife, of a friend, I think are just so powerful. Yeah, that's really neat. I'll never read that verse without thinking about that again. That's, that's really neat. Um, so our just for fun question today is just kind of a chance to get to know each other, get to know you all that are listening. And um, it is, if you could describe the prayer life you want in one word, what would it be? hard to narrow it down to just one word, isn't it? Yes. It <laughs> I've is. got a couple in mind, but really a few. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I think impact for sure. Like I want to know that my prayers are making a difference, that it's not just something I'm doing for my own spiritual well-being or my own mental health. Like I, I want the conviction to know that my prayers truly are making a difference in the world. You know, that's, that's the one probably that if I had to narrow it down to just one, I would pick. What about you? Yeah, the word powerful came to mind. Mm -hmm. Just that, you know, having this picture of being a conduit of God's power in, in the world, that I wouldn't be praying in a way that would just be um, either just it, that nothing that I would pray would be like hindering God's power, that I wouldn't just be mm -hmm. so tied up in my own agenda that I miss God's bigger picture and, and actually participating in these realms of prayer where he just wants to unleash power through, through prayer and intercession. That's awesome. Yeah. I think for me, a close second word would be something to just convey the relationship. You know, I, I want my prayers to be, conversational, you know, maybe passion, to have a passion to pray, to have it not just be something I'm doing out of discipline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And in um, one of Ann Voskamp's books, I don't remember which one it was. I think it was in 10, yeah, 10,000 gifts, 1,000 gifts. I don't remember. Anyway, I, I think know. it's 1,000 gifts. <laughs> and it was, um, she talks about prayer. And so the word, a word that, that I had recently thought of that came to my mind too was, um, Eucharistic. And so she brings up this word, the Greek word, eucharisteo, and it means it's the root of, of thankfulness or thanksgiving. And, and she talks in the book about how um, the miracle is always preceded by thanksgiving. And she talks about Jesus giving thanks and then breaking the bread, you know, mm. and how, you know, so I just love that idea that in our prayers, that no matter what our prayers are, if it's done in a spirit of thanksgiving for who God is and what he can do and what he is doing, that's powerful. I like that. That is really neat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like we've already said, this podcast is called the Praying Christian Women Podcast. And so what we wanted to do in our very first episode is just really break that down. What does it mean to be a praying Christian woman? And how do you know if this is the podcast for you? Because we know that there are lots of choices out there. And 
we both love podcasts. They're so convenient to take with you, to be, you know, having on the background when you're driving or doing housework or out on walks. But we also know that there are plenty to choose from. So we came down with just a fun little list that might help you know right from the beginning if this is a show that's going to be a blessing for you specifically. So how do you know if this podcast is meant for you? So I think one of the ways that you know that you're a praying Christian woman is if you're not perfect. And I think that's something that you and I, Alana, we really, our desire is to project realness and transparency. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't want to come up here and act like we're on our little soapbox and we've got it all together because we are so not. And, and this podcast is, it was born from our own prayer struggles and we struggle yeah. and that is, that's the foundation. So if you're not perfect, you're in the right place. That's one way to know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Which leads us really well into point two. And that is, this is the show for you. If sometimes you struggle with prayer. And I think, Jamie, you hit the nail on the head that we wouldn't be doing this show if we didn't have questions and struggles. And since we have these questions and struggles about prayer, we kind of assumed that other people might too. Yeah. And so if you find that it's hard to focus when you pray or that you just struggle with even being able to carve out time to pray, you're not alone. And and that's why we're here is our hope is, you know, we we've gotten a lot from podcasts and being able to take podcasts with us where we go, you know, doing dishes in the car, running errands, things like that. And so if we can provide you with an opportunity and opportunities to incorporate prayer into your crazy busy world um, and make it less of a struggle, then that's why we want to be here. So if you do struggle that's that's why we're here so you're in Absolutely. the right place <laughs> yeah and you know the issue about finding time to pray kind of leads us into the third point right mm -hmm. yeah so I'm not you know I, I do I kind of tend to do a spoiler before the next one and sorry about that I'm <laughs> head. no it's not a spoiler it's a segue that's what I meant yeah a segue <laughs> <laughs> so yeah number three is that there if there don't seem to be enough hours in the day to cover all of the things and the people that you'd love to pray about, you're in the right place because that means that you are a prayer and that God has already called you into a life of prayer. I think he's called all of us into a life of prayer. But if you have a heart for people and, and prayer is something that's even in your mind, which, you know, that's if you're, if you're listening now, then that's you. And so um, if, if there doesn't seem to be enough time to cover all the things that you want to be praying about, then one thing we would love to do is to incorporate some tricks that we've learned or tips for how to organize your prayer life, tips for how to make prayer possible in mm -hmm. the 24 hours a day that we're each given. Yeah. And this kind of goes back to the name of today's episode, how to be a praying Christian woman, or what does it mean to be a praying Christian woman in the 21st century? We absolutely recognize that women today have very busy schedules. You know, whether you're an employee or you work from home or you're a full-time mom or you're, you know, super involved in ministry or volunteer work, women are busy. And that can make it hard to find the time to pray. And I think also as women, we're often riddled by guilt and we want to find ways to inspire our prayer lives without relying on the guilt tactics because I think we have enough guilt in most cases. Yes, I would agree with that for sure. And you know, you've got guilt coming from other people. And then like, if you're like me, there's just this inner critic that's constantly telling you the things that you're doing wrong or that you're not doing. And, and that's the voice of the enemy. And so we want to focus on on who you are in God's eyes and, and moving forward with a bunch of people that, that share the same struggles and, and want to move forward in that same path. Yeah, we're not here to shame you into praying a certain number of minutes a day yeah. or anything like that. We just want to offer some tools and inspiration that can help you from wherever you are right now. We fully recognize that some of our listeners are going to be way more mature in their prayer lives than we are. And, you know, some people are going to be just beginning. And our goal isn't to make every single praying Christian woman listener, a cookie cutter of us, you know, because that would be kind of 
stupid. The goal is to just really give you some inspiration so that wherever you are in your prayer life, you can find just some tips and useful suggestions that can help you become even more effective or more passionate about your prayers. And I think another way that you can know if this podcast is for you is if you're hungry for more in your walk with God and in your prayer life, like if you just have this sense that the way that you've been praying, that that there just has to be more, um, because that means that you're ready to move into the next level and, and that God is calling you into a more intimate relationship with him. And that isn't to say that you're lower down on the level than someone else. It's all of us have room to grow. And so if, if you have a desire to grow in your prayer life, it doesn't matter where you are in your walk with God, you're in the right place because that's, that's where we are. We, we want more. And, um, you know, we, we just in our process of, of searching for how to get more out of our prayer lives in our own prayer partnership, Alana and I are our prayer partners outside of the podcast. We actually talk in real life too. (laughs) And, um, you know, through our own desire to get more and, and to discover the blocks that keep us from praying more powerfully and effectively. Um, that's, that's how, that's how, you know, you're in the right place is if you, if you want that too. Absolutely. Yeah. Which leads us into the last way to know if this is the podcast for you, which is, I'll let you take this one. You showed up. You're here today. (laughs) Welcome. Possibly come across the Praying Christian Women podcast if you didn't either look for it or see it and think, hey, I want to see what that's about. So if you're here, this is probably the podcast for you because um, if you're interested in prayer, if you're a praying Christian woman in any way at any level, then then this is for you. And we are so glad you're here. Like we are so excited to be able to have you as part of this community because this isn't just a podcast or a show. We, we really want this to be a community where we can connect with you and share this journey with you and, and have a two-way conversation. Absolutely. So in talking about what it means to be a praying Christian woman in the 21st century, we kind of came up with just a list of a few descriptions of when Jamie and I think of what it means to be a praying Christian woman in the 21st century. Just what does that look like? And sort of like the Proverbs 31 woman, these are probably ideals that nobody is going to perfectly reach all of them you know, all at one time. But these are what we sort of feel are the ideals that we want to strive for in our own prayer lives and that we want to help encourage our listeners to strive for. So the praying Christian woman believes fervently in the power and efficacy of her prayers. Did I say that right? Efficacy? Yes, I liked that. That is a weird word. It's one that you see written and you don't like hear. (laughs) (laughs) No, I think that was very well said. But you know, I find that some people pray just out of guilt or duty, or maybe even they just feel like God's already going to do what God's going to do, but he's told me to pray, so I'm just going to do it out of obedience. But I really feel like what we're about here on this podcast is encouraging everyone to grow in their faith of what God can do through the power of prayer and to recognize God does use prayer to change the world. He's used prayer in the past to change history. He can use prayer in ways that are mightier than most of us would dare imagine. Yeah, absolutely. And again, if you have struggles in in believing in the power of prayer, if you're wondering how God works. You're, that, that doesn't mean that you're not in the right place. This is what we strive for and what we really want to get to through these um, discussions and through these, you know, looking into scripture and these resources that we'd like to get you to get to get you there. Yeah, absolutely. This, this is no longer the list of how to know if this podcast is for you. This is the list of, is this where you want to be? <laughs> yeah. Is this where you want to go? Yeah. Our next uh, topic or, or bullet point on here is the praying Christian women knows that her prayers are the real work, sort of like what we talked about in our verse of the day. Yes, we are called to be engaged in a wide number of ministries and jobs and businesses and 
um, family obligations, but prayer truly is the real work. And I think the praying Christian woman realizes that without the power of prayer, the work itself has less meaning and less just power behind it. Yeah, and there's actually a quote. Uh, I'm trying, S.D. Gordon, it's a quote, and it's prayer strikes the winning blow and service is picking up the pieces. And I, oh, I just I love, love that picture of, you know, the prayer is the work. And there's so many times that I myself think, oh, I'm just, I'm too busy. I can't pray about that. And, but, you know, let's get to work doing stuff. And that's one of my big blocks is being a Martha and not a Mary. And I really want to strive to become more and more like that. You know, having that attitude of prayer is the work. <laughs> prayer mm -hmm. is the big work. Yeah, yeah. Another aspect of the praying Christian woman is that the praying Christian woman has a disciplined prayer life, but she isn't compelled by guilt. So sometimes, yes, she knows that she needs to show up to pray, whether she's feeling particularly inspired to do so or not. She knows that she needs to show up to pray, but she's not doing it because she feels guilty if she doesn't or she's superstitious that if she misses a few minutes with God that he's going to curse her day. She is driven by a passion to be in a relationship with the Lord. Yeah. And, you know, I think that is a struggle for all of us, you know, and for me, the discipline part is can be difficult having discipline in prayer life. Um, but having that balance of, of the discipline and the relationship and, and not being compelled by guilt, but just by a desire to, to talk with God more and, and mm -hmm. to, to deepen that relationship. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like they have to go hand in hand, that discipline and devotion have to go hand in hand. And yeah, sometimes you might be relying more on the discipline side of things. I think of, you know, new parents who have to work to find time to just connect with each other. Whereas, you know, an engaged couple probably isn't going to need, you know, they're going to want to spend all the time in the world that they have every three minutes together. You know, we go through different seasons where maybe we do need to rely on discipline more, but dedication and devotion should always be part of that too. It should. And I think one of our goals at Praying Christian Women is to make you excited about prayer, to kind of stoke mm -hmm. the fires and get you excited about prayer so that it is something that you're excited to do and not something that it's just like, oh, I've got to do this again. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's another aspect of the praying Christian woman is that she knows that every day her prayers don't have to look the same. And this took me a long time to learn. I had this notion in my head that if it was good for my prayer life, that I needed to do it every single day. And so I created a routine that got so complicated. I was just exhausted by the end of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it would be like the wife who wants to enjoy more time with her husband. So she says, okay, Every day when you come home from work, we're going to sit for 15 minutes and talk about why we love each other. And then after <laughs> that, we're going to hold hands and look into each other's eyes for at least five minutes. And then we're going to go on a walk and we're going to use that time to talk about what we want to do tonight. And then, you know, like those are all good things, but you don't have to do them all at once and all every day. I wonder if anyone out there has actually done that. We want to hear from you. Have you ever made a list like that for your loved one? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's a really good analogy. I love that. That's totally relevant. <laughs> yeah. And the praying Christian woman, she will engage her emotions, her imagination, and her intuition when she prays. So this is not a woman who is just praying mindlessly. She is fully engaged, fully mentally and spiritually alert. And I like that um, it mentions the intuition too, because I think as women, in general, we're getting into stereotypes here, but I feel like we do have a heightened sense of discernment about certain things, and that's a gift we can use mm -hmm. and God can use to shape our prayers in a really special and unique way. Yeah, that is definite. Not not fighting against who we are and who God has created us to be and, and the way, you know, and I think um, operating within 
our unique gifting and not fighting against it is is another kind of facet of that is you know if you if your imagination does wander when you're praying you know harness that and and we hope that we'll be able to give you tools to be able to do things like that um operating in in who god has made you to be and using those individual qualities to to launch you into a more fruitful prayer life. Um, and I think for both of us, you know, we recognize that even Alana and I have really different prayer lives because we're very different people. Mm-hmm. And I've learned so much from her and the way that she prays and the, the systems that she has in place. And it's just, it's, it's really neat to be in a community like this because I think that's one of the big benefits is that we can learn from each other and we can, we can not be cookie cutter clones <laughs> and still Absolutely. just really grow together. Yeah. And I think one aspect of prayer that we want to emphasize over and over in this podcast is that prayer really is a lifestyle. Prayer isn't something that you do for 15 or 20 minutes in the morning and forget about the rest of the time. Prayer is something that should infuse every aspect of our day. And we'll be talking about things later on in the show in upcoming episodes, like what does Paul mean when he says to pray continually? How does that work in this busy day and age when we're so bombarded by so many distractions? How can we even use those distractions as springboards for prayer? So in addition to talking about prayer, which is a timeless Christian act, we want to talk about prayer in the context of a busy tech savvy world and just what that means. And another, um, another kind of ideal of, of the praying Christian woman is that she doesn't just pray defensively, that, that she is a prayer warrior. And, you know, Alana and I have both talked before about how, you know, you can kind of get into praying as a last resort and, and it's so easy to do and we do it also. And we can look back and think, ah, man, I should have been on the offense. I should have been covering this topic in prayer before it became an issue. And um, that is something that we are excited about learning more about ourselves and and kind of walking through with you and offering on this podcast um, just how to be a prayer warrior because the battle is not against flesh and blood. And it kind of goes back to being, you know, prayer is the real work. There's a very mm-hmm. real battle and just becoming, getting a heightened awareness of the fact that what we see around us is not all that there is, that there's there's an even deeper and more real reality beyond that veil that's going on. And so kind of, you know, peeking behind the curtain and seeing, being more sensitive to what's going on there and hearing from God and and praying with power and using scripture and and taking authority that's been given to us. For sure. Yeah. I found that as a mom, I was doing a lot of reactive prayers. Yeah. So, you know, like I noticed, okay, one of my kids has, you know, is struggling in this area. So I'm going to start praying for it. And I, I would feel guilty because I'm like, it's, I, I told one of my boys, he's been struggling with foot pain because he joined the cross country team and his feet hurt. And sometimes I have to get on him to do his stretches because he's like, well, they don't hurt right now. And I always tell him, I said, well, prevention is so much easier than curing, you know, like you could stretch preventatively for two minutes, or you might have to stretch for 20 minutes a day just for a week to make it feel better. And I feel like I need that reminder in my prayer life that praying defensively for my children is so much more effective than just reacting to things as they come up. Absolutely. And I think just training your mind to think that way is half the battle. And and then, you know, getting into that that realm of just thinking thinking forward and thinking ahead. Absolutely. So now we want to hear from you guys. We would love if you left us a comment and just let us know what's the one word that you would want to describe your ideal prayer life. And also, if you have questions about prayer or topics that you want to make sure to see covered in future episodes, we would really love to hear from you. So please leave us a comment. Hit subscribe. We have quite a few shows coming out for you that you can listen to and check us out to see what we're all about. And in all of our shows, we like to leave you with our blessing and benediction. So today's blessing says, may God bless you by making you strong and courageous. 
May fear and terror be far removed, and may all the spiritual forces that oppose you turn back in shame. May the Lord delight to grant you victory so that no weapon will prevail against you. May your soul rejoice in the victory he gives, and may you look in triumph over all powers of evil. And our benediction is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 8 to 11. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Amen.